step into the shadows with Paranormal M, your gateway to the otherworldly. Subscribe now and enable notifications. Drop a comment down there and get ready to dive deep into the unknown with our latest spine-chilling narratives. The door handle shook wildly. In 2017, when I was 11, I was headed to Disney World with my family. Before we got there, we stopped at my grandparents' retirement community to stay the night. Let me be clear as far as paranormal reasoning, you could say. The retirement home is the infamous The Villages, the community which has a whole documentary, and their house was brand new. No one lived there before my grandparents. So no one died there, and where there was really anything like that. During the daytime, my sister, who was a very logical 20-year-old at the time, we were sitting on the bed of the spare room. My parents and grandparents were in the living room, about 20 feet away from where we were. While we were just chilling, the handle, it was like, it was a handle to a completely closed door, it started to go up and down like crazy, as if someone was outside of the room, was trying to get in as fast as possible. It continued to do so until I grabbed it and opened the door to find absolutely nothing on the other side. We immediately told my family. They had no idea what we were talking about. None of them did it, and honestly... Nobody could have run away from the door fast enough for me not to see them when I opened it. It wasn't wind or anything like that, because it was a thick metal handle shaking like crazy. To this day, we have no explanation for what happened. Haunted Car my daughter purchased an old blue Hyundai. It was for her first get-around car. It was a little beat up, but nevertheless it got her safely from A to B. She told me one night as she glanced into a revision mirror. Revision mirror? I'm going to go ahead and change that to rear view mirror. She saw a young girl with long plaits sitting on the back seat. What's a plat? It was for just a second, and when she looked again, she was gone. She said she'd seen her on multiple occasions, but for some reasons she never felt scared, just weirded out by the experience. She also explained the radio used to turn on and off by itself sometimes. Even the volume would go up and down. I thought it was creepy, but I put it down to an old car with old electricals. Maybe she was tired and the streetlights played with shadows, experiencing pareidolia. One day she was driving us to the shops, and as we were chatting away I saw the radio knob literally turn itself as the music volume went up. I sat there stunned for a moment and in disbelief as to what I saw. I told my daughter what I'd seen. She just laughed and said, See, Mum, I told you the car was haunted. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, fast forward a few months. She decided to sell it. The new owners called her and said that they lost the keys. Then they found them. Then they called again, said the car wouldn't start. Then it started. Just weird stuff. It was a week after she sold it. She was coming out from university. Parked next to her new car was a blue Hyundai Excel. She checked the plate number and it was definitely her old car. She was really taken back as there are literally hundreds of parked cars, but and hundreds of parks. It just happened to be parked next to her. This only happened once and she's never seen that car again.
what spirit is lingering in my hometown? When I was approximately 14 years old, that's 10 years ago, my friend had stayed at my childhood home in a small town in Missouri. My friend and I had been up playing video games in the living room. We eventually both fell asleep on our love seat. The love seat was directly looking at our front door. It had like an open window with no covering. My friend and I both woke up at 3 o'clock. We both looked at the front door and both saw what appeared to be a female standing in a white dress and a veil over her face. She was just staring at us, stalking if you must. We were frozen in fear, not knowing what to do. The lady seemingly floated away from the door until she was basically out of sight. Till this day we have both shared the story with common friends. They all refused to believe us. Fast forward to present day. I currently work near my hometown. My work partner and I were cruising in my hometown. He looked at me, knowing I grew up in the area. Asked if I ever saw anything creepy here. I mentioned my old house being haunted. I didn't go into detail. My partner continued to explain that during his teenage years he was driving on the main road in the town. He saw a female in a wedding dress with a veil over her head. He thought it was creepy, of course. He told me that he was still driving at over 45 miles an hour, and the female was chasing him, matching his speed. I still didn't mention the whole incident that I'd experienced. It wasn't as short as expected, but... Does anybody know what could be happening? He had mentioned an old house that was abandoned, being the home of a widow. That particular house was also the house I used to sneak into as a child. Ask Reddit. So... I told this to my mother, like, a good while ago. It's one of my best childhood memories. My grandmother passed away ten years ago. I still talk about her a lot because I grew up with her and my aunt and I loved her immensely. The memory in question is me combing my mom's hair that was super long with beautiful black and white shadings. I clearly remember going with the comb from the top of her head all the way down to the tips, saying that I wished to have the same hair when I get old. I was maybe five or six then, not sure, but it's still vivid in my mind like it was yesterday. We talked during the time I combed her hair. That was before I got called by my friends to play outside. We did this almost twice a week. Well... My mom looked at me confused and said that my grandmother never had hair this long. She hated long hair, and the longest ever that she'd seen it was like shoulder length. The one I remember went way down until the hips. No chance I mixed it up. She then took an old photo of my great-grandmother and showed it to me. You can guess, her hair was very long, and from the black and white photo, you could see the shades of it was like I remembered. My mom then tells me that they always wondered why I spent so much time in my grandmother's room alone and talking to myself. They thought I was playing with puppets and didn't question it further. Looks like I met my great-grandmother, who my mom says passed away too early from an abusive husband. And apparently, my aunt experienced the same. But upon asking... She says she doesn't remember anymore. Either way, I still think of these moments, and they always bring a smile on my face. Ask Reddit. I traveled with my family to the island of my father's birth in the South Pacific. We were staying at a hotel on the beach. Three things happened 
and I recall them with clarity. The first was our first day there. My parents are walking on the beach, and I'm getting acclimated to the hotel room. There's a sharp professional knock on the door. I peep through the keyhole. There's a man standing on the other side in the employee's clothing, pushing a cart with dirty dishes on it. I open the door, and no one's there. Second, my family all shared the one room, with my mom and sister on one bed, my dad on the other, and me on the floor. I woke up at 2 a.m. I looked out the window on the patio and I saw my dad out there smoking a cigar and watching the waves. So I get up to go hang out with them. But when I opened the door, no one was there. I turned around and he was still in bed. So I went back to my sleeping bag and looked out the window one more time. Still saw him sitting out there. So I covered my head and didn't sleep till morning. Finally, I was going to the bathroom in the middle of the day when a smacking sound on the window caught my attention. This window was frosted and only foot wide, but floor to ceiling. Pressed up against the top of the window from outside near the ceiling was a hand. I stared at it and while I was watching it, it smacked the window twice more, then vanished. The bathroom wall abutted a small rocky cliff, so there was no place for someone to stand and reach for. Ask Reddit My husband and I were staying at my sister's place. She was out of town. We had her ten-month-old with us. We had set him up in a playpen in her room, as we were sleeping in the guest room. We had a monitor on so we could hear if he woke up. The monitor kept crackling. It was the strangest thing. It sounded like static and it was very loud. We moved the monitor around several times and even snuck into his room to try to move the receiver. We were thinking something might be interfering. But the crackling continued. Though it wasn't constant, it was very intermittent. We joked around that it must have been the ghost of the man who lived there before my sister. We went to bed and had the monitor on, but the crackling was so annoying because he'd just drift to sleep it would start to crackle. Then it would disappear. Then it would start again. We got up and moved it three times checked on the baby again to ensure everything was okay. Nothing was amiss. After about 40 minutes of this, I had just started to drift to sleep when the stupid crackling started again. Must be a ghost, my husband joked, to which I remarked, Okay, ghost, I'm sorry, but you're gone, and you should go to the other side now. There's nothing here for you. The crackling abruptly stopped, and it didn't make a sound ever again. That was months and months ago. We've never heard the crackle since. Ask Reddit <clears throat> For the whole of my childhood, my parents always spoke of a time when I, the oldest child, was a baby. They were in the room of our house in which one full wall was a window. This window overlooked the garden. My parents were just watching TV one night. It was probably about 10 p.m. Apparently, they heard a very clear knock on the window, which made them both jump. Now, you may think that the sound was probably just something falling on glass or brushing against it, but my dad describes it as five loud knocks on the glass. This was confusing to them since the security light, which would often light up because of a fox at the bottom of the garden, or moths a meter or so away from it, hadn't been triggered. There is no way to get into the garden without passing the security light other than climbing a brick wall that has bushes and trees all around the garden. 
which are all in clear view of the house. There's literally no way to get into the garden undetected. Anyway, my parents immediately looked out the window, but couldn't see anyone, so my dad goes into the garden to see if there's anyone in the garden. Perhaps they were setting off the security light in the process. They never found anyone, and the CCTV footage showed that no one was in the garden at all until my dad went out. When I was 10 or 11, still sharing a room with my sister, we heard the same thing. Roughly 10 p.m. again. Different house, same city. Our bedroom was upstairs, however there was the roof of a downstairs room which you could climb out onto from our fire safety window. Being like 8 or 10, we were too scared to look behind the curtain, especially since we both knew our parents' story. We both heard it meaning four people in our family have witnessed the knocking. Ghostly Encounters on the TTC, back in the mid-1980s. Back around 1986, I used to live in the East End of Toronto. At the time, I was 24. I used to work at a company called Atlantic Packaging in Scarborough. It's like all blue-collar workers. I had a strict schedule in order to maintain my sanity in working rotating shifts without getting burnt out. My shift that week was the midnight shift. So I leave the house, head to Coxwell Subway Station heading towards Kennedy Station. That's the last stop. So I get on at Coxwell and sit at the front of the car. As per my habit, I scope the car to see what entities are surrounding me. Human types. I'm sitting there for about 20 minutes, until finally the subway lurches into Kennedy. Now in the car was just some guy in front of me further down, and another few guys. No women. So I get up and walk toward the door when I feel someone close behind me. I was surprised only because I was the only person at the end of the car. I figured for a second that the guy further down had decided to walk towards my end. When I turn around, there's this woman standing right behind me with dark hair and a sinister smile. Honestly, if she was a ghost, she noticed my surprise. I got off the subway car and watched her walk down the platform toward the stairs. I remember to this day that she was, well, everything she was wearing. She had this floral blouse on with tan flared pants from the mid-70s. Had like a Farrah Fawcett styled hair flip. Now this was the mid-1980s and that style was long gone. I remember running up the other side of the set of stairs. I thought, okay, maybe I just missed something. But no, she never emerged. Finally, I walked up to the dude who's been in front of me, who was waiting for his bus. I asked him if he remembered me on the subway. He said, yeah, you were at the other end. Now, remember the car was empty all the way to Kennedy, so there was a little traffic. I then asked him if he remembered a dark-haired woman. He just looked at me and said, no, I just saw you and no one else. To this day, I can only assume it was some poor woman who had committed suicide on the TTC or had been killed in the mid-1970s. Even now, when I go to Kennedy nearly 40 years later, I still think about that woman on the platform and whatever possibly happened to her. Old Nursing Home Ghost Story in Northeast I worked at an assisted living facility that was in the Northeast. Two buildings were extremely old on the property. They dated back to 1747. One was a stone house with a barn and the other was a hospital-slash-nursing home. My actual facility wasn't built until 1890. It was a hotel at first but converted to a nursing home in the 1990s. 
you can just feel the history of being on the land. Most disturbances happen in older hospital nursing homes. We used it for storage while we were updating to a newer facility. My first boss made the mistake of going into it by himself at night. There was no power to that building and he ended up getting locked in there in the pitch black. He called me up, begged me to come open the door. The call was garbled and not clear. Lots of static. But almost as if I was getting another connection to another call. When I got there, I couldn't budge the door. It was on the other side pulling. Finally got out and and you could tell he was spooked. He told me he put something to keep the door propped open, but it was moved about five feet from the door, as if somebody moved it and the presence was holding the door shut. My boss told me that he heard sounds upstairs, like footsteps and running up the stairs, and things moving around in the basement, too. After that day, we made a rule. No one goes in there alone. It was just one of those places where the hairs on your neck stood up and you always felt a chill. I heard the sounds. A few times. So we got creative. I told him if this place is haunted, I want to try to capture the ghosts either on my phone or on a recording. Well, the next day we had to get some lumber. It was stored in there. You guessed it. We heard running upstairs again. We got to the staircase and a mist started to come down the staircase. It was only about knee high, but when it got to the last ten steps, a shape started to emerge. It took a few steps down and then the mist dissipated and disappeared. We felt such a chill, yet it was summer. We were both in shock, but at the same time pretty excited to see something like that. But we ran as fast as we could out of there. When we got back to our facility, we were talking with some of the staff about what we saw. It was amazing how others who went into that building had similar experiences. We also were told about some hauntings in the actual nursing home. At night was the worst being there. Your mind would play tricks on you. Always felt like someone or something was staring at you. And the sounds as if the spirits of those who died there were trying to contact you. There was one wing of the nursing home that seemed to be where other hauntings took place. People always would hear doors slam. Sometimes would hear that from far away. You'd see a faint image of a person crossing the hallway. We even had one contractor walk off a job because he saw something. I definitely think the place was a magnet to ghosts and spirits, especially since so many people had died in that area. I also believe some people are more intuitive in seeing and feeling presences. Others just go by not knowing or caring. Whispers of the Past For context, when I was little, my parents built a house. This house was built on the site of an older, incredibly small church. Really not big. The church was mainly used for funerals and honoring people. It wasn't tall, either. In the past, I used to wake up, often in the middle of the night, to people whispering my name. Just whispering. Nothing more happened. O38. Danny. Danny. Not my name. Wake up, friend. Then you'd hear someone saying something in the background. It was bizarre. Then I would wake up and looked around and that was it. It stopped when I responded once. I said, Hello, who's calling me? After that it was over. Really, never heard anything again. I didn't even find it scary, just strange. I also slept just fine. F 
Fairy Sightings In the first grade, I slept over at my friend's house. We had done a lot of fairy hunting activity, more like trying to summon them. We made fairy houses, watched Tinkerbell, chanted anything you could imagine. So, I wake up and check my surroundings to see if anything had changed since I'd gone to bed. In my peripheral vision, I see a little figure more or less hovering above the ground. It was smaller than a finger. It was black and had wings. My shoe with laces was sitting on the ground and the bedroom door was open. The figure flew out of the door, but on its way out it grabbed my shoelace and pulled my shoe onto its side and closer to the door. Unfortunately, my friend didn't see it. She still doesn't believe me because her sister had been the one responding to our fairy letters the whole time. But it would have been impossible for her sister to have done it. The second time I saw one, around the fifth grade, it was a very similar experience. I was outside in the carport when one just sudden I saw something in my peripheral, a small black figure hovering above the ground. It was flying very fast. I saw it go into some sort, sort of short shrubs. It wasn't windy, and I heard and saw it push the leaves out of its way. My sister was there, but once again did not see it. Lastly, in high school, I drove back into the ferries. Or I dove, excuse me, back into ferries. I researched them, and I did all the things to try to interact with them again. I was outside during twilight with my friend, literally talking about them. That's when we heard the most magical, peculiar sound, which to us sounded like it was coming from an old tree stump. Imagine if Maybell Flowers' Lily of the Valley could ring, and there were thousands of them. That's what we heard, a soft and higher pitchish sound. We both heard it. We go to investigate where it's coming from. There's no birds, no bugs that we can see. Neither of us had heard a sound like it before, nor have we heard one since. Honestly, hearing this sound is even more convincing than actually seeing them the time before. Nana came to visit. This encounter happened a little over a decade ago, but haunts me to this day. It was Thursday, July 11th, 2013. I was six years old and I was very into art at that age. Decided to stay inside on a hot day in color. I was sitting in my room and just coloring away while my mom and oldest brother were in the kitchen making some snacks for the driveway party that we were having that evening. As I was coloring in my favorite Spongebob coloring book, it got too hot, opened up my bedroom window for some fresh air. About ten minutes later, my brother came upstairs to hang out with me for a bit before he go to left to go see some friends. In the midst of talking about plans for the day, a gust of wind blew through my room and the smell of a very sweet and floral perfume came through. I didn't think much of it until my brother went running outside looking for my dad while screaming, Dad, Nana's here. I can smell her perfume. I'd never met my Nana because she passed before I was born. My brother, however, was eight years old when she had passed. Had the chance to meet her. We have a 15-year age gap. My dad didn't really believe me until another gust of wind hit the house again. He smelt it. My dad started bawling. That's when I came outside and asked. When I got the explanation, I understood why he was so upset, and my brother panicked. Years later, I smelt the same perfume of hers while cleaning my house and instantly knew, Nana is always here. So I guess there sometimes is a sweet ending to a story. Experience when younger. 
Not necessarily a scary one, but maybe one I should share. Mostly because somebody could have some perspective on it. I've always considered myself a very happy and positive person. Things seemed to be amplified when I moved into a cabin my family built on some family land when I was in my teen years. I'm sure it's just a coincidence, but when I moved there, I also started to feel very lucky and like there was a guardian angel looking after me. Not sure if it's relevant, but to my point, maybe someone is noticing a pattern that I don't. Anyway, fast forward and I'm in college. I meet a Navy guy, of course, and we decide we're going to marry and move away. I go back to my cabin home and stay in the basement, which I never did. My room was turned into an office. That's when I went to college. There were bunk beds in the basement. I recall waking up in the middle of the night to a very tall, broad-shouldered figure hovering beside the bed looking at me. It made me feel really warm kind of like an additional blanket was on me. I also had a sense of relief, like they were telling me everything was going to be fine, even though I was moving away. I went back to sleep all comfy. The next morning I had a complete recollection of what happened. I was like, holy fuck. Really freaked myself out because I may have been visited by a ghost or something. So I explained it to my mom but was also sure to tell her I felt that it was a good spirit. She said her grandpa was very tall and had broad shoulders, so maybe it was him. I believe in spirits and all things, but what does this community make of this? I still remember the feeling to this day. I still continue to live a happy life. Nothing very bad has happened to me, and I still feel protected to this day. I get these strange visions, but they aren't visions when it comes to certain things that become true. I can share those examples, but not sure if they're relevant. Paranormal Experience in Venice I got followed by a wailing entity slash entities. I was in this Venice, it was this time this year, and I still can't get my head around how and why this happened. I was there for three nights. It was my first time in Venice and I loved it. I was there with friends, but due to our poor planning, all four of us stayed in different hotels. I chose one near the station, which was an intimate hotel ran by a religious family. It was a classic old Venetian villa facing a canal. The place had a chapel, a garden, and full of religious merchandise and decorations throughout. My room was on the second floor. You had to climb three sets of stairs. And on the top you were met with a marble square lobby with a round table in the middle. There were few rooms around this lobby. and The rest of the rooms continued on two corridors that stretched on either side of the lobby. My room was one of the ones attached to this lobby. A single room that looked over the canal. It was a simple small room composed of a single bed with a cross above the head, a basin, and then a wardrobe. It was a cheap and cheerful hotel. I slept like a baby the first two nights. However, on my third and final night, I had trouble getting to sleep. There were loud neighbors, they were watching videos. Didn't help. I had to bang on their wall around 1 a.m. after they stopped. Then I fell asleep. But I remember feeling uneasy and agitated that night. I woke up sometime between 3.30 and 4.30. Which I guess wasn't unusual for me as I don't sleep well normally. That's when I heard a group of loud wailing people in the building. That echoed into my room via the hall. At this point, I remember thinking that the source of this noise was either coming from the stairs or the bottom of it. I was initially annoyed, thinking that there were a bunch of drunkards who came in after a night out. 
Then it suddenly hit me that the hotel had a 12 a.m. curfew. It was unlikely a group of people suddenly came out of their rooms to cause a commotion. I came to my senses, which made me more aware that this mysterious wailing, it was loud, almost in despair, and crescendoed over and over, echoing into the lobby. I came to my senses and realized that this was, or they were definitely not human. It's hard to explain, but something in me knew this was not alive, in one form or another. Humans could not make this noise. I never, ever felt like this before. Then the wailing finally stopped. I was relieved, but what happened next is something I will never forget. The sound resumed from the foot of my bed, and this thing or these things wailing in my room at the front of my bed very much present, closer and louder. I don't know what happened after that. I blacked out or passed out, and when I was conscious it was around 7 a.m., to my surprise, I didn't feel as scared. Glad, though, until later on in the day where I tried to recap what on earth happened. To this day, I can't explain what this is. I wasn't a paranormal enthusiast or a believer. Believed I would stay like this until proven wrong. I'm actually easily spooked. and always thought I'd end up crying or screaming if I encountered a ghost. My theory is that my body just went into extreme fear after that thing came into my room, simply shut down, hence the passing out feeling. I think about this pretty often and got the chills whilst writing this. I'd love to hear what everybody else thinks about it, though. Thoughts, theories, etc. Spirits, ghosts, poltergeist, apparitions, etc. Here is what I can tell you based on our perspective as Muslims. When we talk about the afterlife, we refer to people's spirits in their graves, can communicate with the living. But though certain ways such as dreams... However, we do believe that deceased can't in no way or form cause harm or benefit to anyone, basically meaning that they have no power whatsoever to do anything. What you're talking about, however, demons, spirits, and whatnot, are what we call the jinn. What are the jinn? The jinn are living sentient beings who, like humans, have free will to do all sorts of things. They have communities, they get married, they procreate, you name it. However, there are certain things that they have and we don't, such as moving at incredible speed, possessions, shape-shifting to any living creature and imitating their voices or behaviors, so on and so forth, and the ability to not be seen by humanity unless they want you to see them, either as shadow people, animals, humans, you name it. However, you might ask, how can sometimes they, the jinn, say things that you might know or no one else knows? Well, according to our scriptures, a quarin, Arabic for companion, that's where a jinn who follows you wherever you go which also is the reason why some mediums and fortune tellers can tell you things about yourself since they communicate with that co excuse me, Kareen. That Kareen usually is a jinn who other junks... junks... I'm gonna hazard a guess and say that Kareen usually is a jinn who either just asks about you and gives them your information. The jinn vary from genuinely nice jinn who wish you no harm. They just want to go about their usual day. Others are pranksters that like scaring people just for the fun of it. Others are downright evil, wish nothing but harm to you. Whether by leading you astray or try to literally hurt you. And those are what we call devils, shaitan. And that includes Satan. 
In Islam, we believe that he's a jinn too, and not a fallen angel. Not to mention there are weak jinn. There are really powerful jinn. Usually, the powerful variations of them are called ifrits. They have the power to move heavy things with little effort. So, we believe that jinn also have different beliefs. There are Muslim jinn and non-Muslim jinn and so on. And the word of the Quran can be effective too, especially when it comes to haunting and such. If they are Muslims, they can enjoy the Quran and can even read it with you. Usually when the name of Allah is invoked by reciting the Quran, the evil ones can get hurt by it and can be repelled by the words of the Quran. And an important factor that everybody needs to know. The jinn can try and scare you. However, once they know that no matter what they do, they can't scare you, they eventually give up and they stop scaring you because it's not fun. So they'll eventually stop. However, if the jinn is literally trying to hurt you, such as random scratches and things falling on you without any reasonable explanation, some kind of medical condition that medicine can't explain, and by that, I mean they check on you and find that there's nothing wrong with you clinically, which are usually signs of possession. Then the only way for that jinn to leave you is by having a Muslim imam or a cleric to read the Quran on you. I think I might be a clairaudient. First, I was not really paying attention. I was trying to fix something when I heard some kiss and suck their teeth. It sounded exactly like my mom and was in the direction of her room. So I thought she had went to lay down for a nap and somehow woke her up or disturbed her. Only when I went to check, my mom wasn't even in the house. Next, something similar happened, only it was coughing. Again, sounded like my mom and from her room. Again, she wasn't even home. Then I was sitting in the living room, halfway watching TV, half on my computer. That's when I heard somebody say, Nana. It sounded like my niece. Thought it was weird, but chalked it up to my imagination. Even joked to myself, If that was a ghost, I'm not your Nana. A few minutes later, the same voice said, Nana, but it had moved to the other side and in front of me. Not sure how relevant it is to these occurrences, but the earlier encounter was me sitting in my room relaxing. That's when I heard someone whisper what sounded like, Be careful, from very close behind me. Of course, I turned around and no one was there. Again, neither my mom or niece were home. True Event, The Lamp Post, 2023 My wife of 22 years died on the operating table. I was at a local regional hospital during a routine outpatient surgery. I was not notified of her death by the hospital. And that's a whole other topic of discussion. Kindly, before you criticize and scold me for... Why weren't you at her surgery? I had just gotten out of the hospital four days earlier for a brief five-day stay, and my own surgery had my first post-op doctor's visit and her mother volunteered to take her. I was finally informed by her mother in person of my wife's death. I was walking out of the door of my own apartment. You cannot understand the feeling of earth dropping out from under your feet until you jump from the bridge or off a cliff. Some is the grief one feels in the first few hours. Her family came over, mother, father, brother. I had called my sons to break the news. We sat around and drank a pair of bottles of whiskey and too many cigarettes. They left around 9 p.m. About an hour later, I decided to go check the mail and walk down the driveway. I reached the mailbox, and as I was turning back toward the house... I noticed the lamppost in our front yard at the end of our little cement sidewalk blinking furiously. 
the light had stopped working a year prior. When we bought this house, six years, now eight, she and I went on about changing the fixture out. I wanted a regular electric light and she solar. Happy wife, happy life. Rule led me to installing a solar light, which lasted till about six months before her death, as mentioned. It was strobing, blinking, and flaring. I went and stood at it for maybe five minutes, transfixed. That was before my son, noticing me standing in the front yard at midnight, came out and said, When did you fix that? To which I replied, I think Alice is trying to tell me something. In regard to the light, I stayed out there for another 45 minutes talking to this lamp post. And while I wasn't drunk, and while firmly gripped by grief and cataclysmic anger, this stupid little flickering lamp was comforting. There's a video of the flickering light and me talking. The light continued and then eventually went out. I then went inside and went to sleep. That light hasn't come back on since. Ask Reddit. I work in maintenance and hospital, but this story comes from out of work hours. Back in November, my grandfather passed away. He'd been living in a care home for several years now, and as we were from a smaller city, his main care aide was actually an ex's mother, whom still close to. Nearing his final day, she texted me that things weren't looking good, to get my mom, who works out of town, and myself to see him as soon as possible. The next two nights were exhaustive. Her and I barely left his bedside. We were wetting his lips, rubbing his head, and singing Charlie Pride, and telling him stories from my childhood. At one point, is anybody going to San Anton? Anton? Antoine? I don't know how to say that, I'm sorry. At one point, the song on the CD player starts playing and my mom just tears up talking about how the song reminds her of her father the most. He wasn't really coherent besides the glimmering moment that the first day we had gotten there. By the final day, we were sitting watching the breathing turn and choke breaths. As the hour got nearer, my ex's mom was contacted, came in on her day off to sit with us for the final hour. My mom had her father's head in her lap and was still had this Charlie pride on the radio. She was whispering in his ear to stop being stubborn, that she would take care of her brothers, that she had me to take care of her. The gaps got longer and longer in his breaths. My ex's mom was sitting next to me, the CD player playing behind us and my mom laying on the opposite side of the care home bed. All of a sudden his breathing stops. And in that moment, so did the CD player. It hadn't skipped once the whole weekend. My mom, figuring Taryn had turned it off, started sobbing, assuming that it was to signify he was officially gone. I just sat and looked up at Taryn and said, Did that just happen? After a good twenty seconds, out of nowhere, he suddenly took a shuddery breath. And then the CD scrambled forward, the song just before is anybody going to San Antone. Not sure if that's the name of the song, but it was about not wanting to miss someone. It started playing. Then he was gone by the end. By the end of that song. The song Mom remembered him most by. Taryn mentioned odd things happen more often. At least, this happens when a person finally passes. Bin bag entity falls from tree, nearly crushes Chav. This didn't happen to me, but to a friend of mine who witnessed a bizarre moment with his friends in the woods. This would have taken place around 2006 in Cornwall of the UK. 
I was part of the alternative crowd, but had a few townie slash chav friends as well, one of which was a guy called Richard. For those that don't know what the townie slash chav folk tend to be, it's like run of the mill anyway, they're working types who are a bit rough around the edges, but as a rule very down to earth. Zero interest in the paranormal unless they can snort it or steal it. So Richard's at a party in a place called Bald Who Woods one night. Side note, Bald Who Woods is infamous for being associated with all manner of occult practice, from witches and warlocks to devil worshippers. This was due in part to there being a south-facing church in the woods. Allegedly, all sorts of nefarious activity occurred in and around Bald Who a long time ago, but not within the last 20 years or so. Not that any chav would be interested to even be bothered by these anecdotes. Two completely different worlds. So back to the story. Richard and a group of 15 to 20 people were partying in the woods. There was some alcohol and drugs involved, but not for Richard and a couple other people who were driving that night. They made a bonfire, drink and drugs were no doubt flowing, and they partied until around 1 a.m., that's when they decided to move on to a house party in nearby Truro. They put out the fire and then started to make their way out of the woods. Now there's lots of trails through Bald Hu. It's a popular woods during the daytime. But Richard left the path to go and piss against a tree. He didn't venture far, literally just a few meters off the path behind some bushes, up to this huge tree. He started pissing and then heard the creaking of branches above him. He stepped back and looked up to see a huge black mass falling down towards him. He jumped back and screamed, causing the group to come storming through the bushes. They all witnessed what had fallen some 40, 50 feet from the tree. It was a huge black object, moving and twisting on the floor. It was smooth, shiny, and resembled a beanbag. They didn't say it was a bin bag. That's just the closest thing that they could compare it to. It writhed back and forth, seemingly not interested or aware of the group. Regardless, they didn't stick around. They stared in fear and disbelief for a few moments and then ran back to the path in their cars. Richard isn't prone to fights of, excuse me, Richard isn't prone to flights of fancy. He had no interest in anything otherworldly or paranormal. When he told me the story, he was deadly serious and had a fearful, confused demeanor about him, which was very out of character. Also, at least 15 other people witnessed him. I have no reason to disbelieve this account. Two things he noted really struck with me. Stuck with me. One was the size of this thing. He compared it to my brother. My brother's six foot four and was around 120 kilograms back then. Hefty fucking lad. But it didn't really have the shape of a person, just a big mass, like if a very large person was put into a huge bin bag. The second was the lack of noise it made. It had fallen from a height of almost 50 feet, landed on a hard woodland floor. There was no heavy breathing and no grunting or growling or yelping. No moan or cry for help. No sound apart from the noise it made from writhing round on the forest floor. The Old Man in the Secret Garden Background I live in a small town, but in the popular fancy neighborhood that everybody made sure to hit up on Halloween night because of the full-sized candy bars. My family lives on a dead end, and in the deepest part of this small neighborhood which contains my aunt's house, my sister's, and mine. My house is the oldest house, as well as the first house to be built before the whole neighborhood. Before, it was all woods as far as I know. My aunt is very creative and artistic, so she turned this trail in her backyard into a secret garden. It was full of old angel statues, old bird fountain, and a bench, and just a lot of woods. 
Me and my cousins always played in these woods when we were kids, until we heard the old man. Note, by the garden there is a super old shed made of tin, and it was there before my house, I'm guessing. Also about a hundred feet away of a slab of old busted concrete the size of another shed covered by a ton of leaves and dirt. Just thought I would add that. The beginning was around eight or nine years old, and after school I wanted to go play at my cousin's house like I usually did. So I walked up to the driveway. My older cousin, M, nice, she was twelve. She was playing with the basketball, stopped to ask me if I would heard the old man. I was obviously confused. I asked what he was talking about. He then pointed at the secret garden and said, listen. So we went quiet, and in that instance, all you heard was moaning like somebody was in pain. After hearing it for over five minutes, I ran home as it never stopped. My cousin informed my aunt about the noises. We were hearing them. She just thought about it was maybe nothing and brushed it off, since we were young and always played pretend in the woods. But the noise never stopped. It would grow louder and be very quiet, but never stopped. The next day, my older cousin, I had a friend that lived the next yard over, had a unique name. He decided to cut through the woods as he usually did, get to my cousin's house, only to be stopped. He heard his name being called through the woods that went further back. He was there for a few minutes, guessing confused. My aunt noticed him. The kitchen window had a view of the garden. Immediately dropped everything, yelling and running to him, checking and making sure he was unharmed and okay, which freaked us out because she didn't believe us about the old man. The neighbor then said somebody was calling for him in the woods, groaning his name loudly. He ended up getting homeschooled, even though his dad was a public school teacher. He sort of stopped coming over. At my house, our woods are connected, and in my backyard we have a huge shop. My dad and his friend worked out of it. My dad's friend was alone working in the shop with all the shop doors open and begins to hear this moaning noise, even over the machine equipment. So we walked down the hill to check out the noise, and it stopped. We went back to work, heard the noise again, and this repeated several times before he just left. Soon after this, my aunt freaked out and called the police. The police heard the noise, and all I remember is them saying, We didn't find a body or anything else after the house is searching our woods. This wouldn't be the time the police were called either. At least the first time. At some point the groaning stopped, maybe a week or two. When it started back, my aunt had called the police again to come and double check. Again they found nothing. My aunt was most likely terrified, tried not to show it. She went around the surrounded areas nearby Longay Company and other houses a mile away from the woods to try to get answers if they had heard it or if they are making the noises themselves. Then my aunt started holding prayer groups with women from her church to come and pray over her home. This happened a few times. I remember seeing around nine women in a circle praying and holding hands over the yard for minutes. But the moaning stopped. We never played in the secret garden again. I'll never know the truth to what we had heard. What I saw, but I know that I saw something out in the corn. I live in New England. My family love to do corn mazes every fall. Even if we all scatter for work or life, we make a point of at least meeting to do a corn maze every year. A few days back, we're out in a corn maze on this really, really old farm. It's been there for forever, and they do corn mazes every year. I'd gotten separated from my brother and my mom, and I couldn't hear any other people in the maze. I looked through one of the walls to the next path over, and I could swear up and down I saw a little, like a plant almost, 
like four legs made of green parts with the branch that connects to a leaf to a flower but longer. All of them converged to connect at the single stalk that pointed up. There also wasn't any anatomy to it. It didn't have a head or arms. But the central stalk was as thin as a twig, not that big. I didn't think you'll believe me, but I saw it moving and walking for a few seconds and then it moved out of sight. But it was moving on the other path, just on the other side of the corn wall. I don't know what it was, and I can't find any mythology or stories that seem to be like this. I'm not making it up. Just want to know if anybody's heard of something like this before. Cross necklaces. Rosary changed location, tangled into a ball while I was away. When I was 17, I went on a weekend trip for school. I left my house Friday morning and didn't return until Sunday. My mother left town that Saturday, so only my father was home. When I left, my room was in order, and I'm not an unorganized or untidy person. I made the bed and put everything away like I usually did before going to school. When I came home Sunday afternoon, I went to my room and found four or five rosary slash cross necklaces all tangled together and balled up in the center of my bed. Nothing else was out of place. I thought it was a prank and asked my parents about it. But they were both as freaked out as I was. My dad swore he wasn't in my room. My mom said that she only went in Friday afternoon to vacuum. I also asked the neighbor, which was my friend, if she did this as a prank. She promised she didn't, and was also quite weirded out. All of the cross necklaces had been in a wooden box inside my closet on the other side of the room. When I came home, the box was closed, but the closet door was cracked maybe two centimeters. Grew up Catholic, stopped going to church about a year before this event, but felt the need to save the crosses. Never really figured it out, and this was the only strange occurrence that happened to me that I can remember while living in a very old farmhouse. I put the necklaces and the rosary back and went about my business. Anklet Noises Visit from a Spirit So it's winter time, so usually I've been sleeping at 7 a.m. or staying up late. Anyways, I go to my bed around 7 or 8, just lay down and get some shut-eye from staying up for so long. My dog, Layla, decided that she wants to stay downstairs on the couch and sleep, which is fine. Thought I'd nap for two hours and wake up around 11. So I did just that. Anyways, I was in a dream state, dreaming of my friends and trying to go somewhere with them in that dream. That's when all of a sudden I heard these gung hru noises in my sleep. I was in that mood where I wanted to keep dreaming and I thought that the noises were a part of my dream until my alarm went off and I realized it wasn't. I was wide awake. I quickly said a prayer because I knew I was awake, still hearing those anklets. I knew I was either going to see a spirit, or I was hearing my mom, who's awake maybe pacing in the hallway because she wears anklets too. Anyways, I told whoever's making this noise, leave now, you're not welcome here. It didn't stop, and at this point I was up and fully aware of my environment. I was confused because where the hell was this noise coming from? I quickly grabbed my phone and played gospel music. My door was creaked open slightly. My mom was awake a half an hour later, around 11.30. I asked my mom, Were you awake doing anything? She said no. I asked her if she had her anklet on. She said nope. I never felt any presence of spirit. I remember feeling normal when I was hearing the anklets. But I'm still confused and I don't understand what this anklet noise was. The music really helped because, like I said, it stopped immediately. 
I want an explanation as to why I heard this. Creepy as hell. No activity for a couple of months. And then... So the holidays have been hectic. And no reported issues for a couple of months. No strange things happened under our roof. Well, maybe a strange presence felt once, but nothing that disturbed me. My children sometimes still talk about a scary monster. But the scary monster could be anything. A cat, a spider, a bug, a shadow, you name it. Literally anything that seems scary is a monster. But tonight has been eventful. It was a busy day. Payday. And my husband got a nice paycheck with commission. Not sure if it's relevant, but I like to describe things and the events leading up to them. Possibly my ADHD. So we went shopping and bought some new things. A nice crock pot. Ours had been broken for over a year now. And an immersion blender. Always wanted one. And a new toaster oven because the other one broke about a week or so ago. The heating element melted and bent inside. I've seen that before. Of course, we got groceries and things we needed. We got home and we were both exhausted and put everything away. I got hungry and said I'd go get something since I didn't want to make dinner. My husband was in a mood and decided to clean the whole upstairs bathroom. Not gonna lie, we aren't the tidiest, and it's been a mess since before Christmas, so it was beautiful and spotless. Ironically, we both talked about how we hadn't seen any paranormal activity lately. This was earlier in the day as we were coming home. And I said, it's probably because our house is so dirty that they hate being around the chaos and mess. We both laughed. I feel like my words are coming to bite me now. So after I came home from getting food and we ate, I went upstairs to rest. My cat, Kaya, was laying beside me. I'm just chilling. One of my children is sleeping beside me, my little girl. She's sound asleep, not a peep or a stir. And I'm reading on my phone. I'm facing up. My cat just suddenly bolts like he's scared. Rips my face a new one. I'm not exaggerating when I say I had a literal stream of blood going from my cheek to my neck. Luckily, it was just deep nail indents and not scratches on my cheek. I freaked a bit because I'm feeling warm blood coming down my face. My husband patches me up. Such a sweetie. I don't know what really made my cat bolt, but he did it again later. I'm thinking, he's just getting a little senile. He's not a jumpy cat, but he's blind in one eye. He's pretty chill compared to the rest of my cats, though. My most loyal boy, too. Always comes when I call. Kind of like a dog, really. Didn't think much of it, though. Not ghost-related, anyways. I was just thinking maybe another cat passed by and sort of batted him. I wasn't paying attention, perhaps. Arya is sneaky like that. She's my stealth black cat with sharp needles for claws. But he's never been that terrified. Anyways, now everyone is in bed. I'm letting Kayo sleep next to me and soothing him because even though I was mad at him earlier, I can't blame the poor cat. He just came to lay next to me as I'm typing this. And then I hear it. It sounds like voices. It's been hours since we've gone to bed, but I have a tendency to stay up and read. It happened at about 2 a.m. It's 30 minutes past that now. At first, I'm thinking it might be the reading machine my mom got for my daughter for Christmas. They love that thing, but I'm realizing the sound is like an adult voice and different voices talking to each other. I literally sit up and say, what the fuck is that? My husband, who is snoring, and is now snoring, just stops and wakes up. He hears it too. At first I'm like, did somebody break in? That frightened me. And since I thought it might be the dream machine, I checked my children's room first. They were absolutely passed out. Nothing was around them. By now my husband has realized it's the TV. He said he was very certain he turned it off. So was I, because I hadn't heard anything for hours. 
We both went downstairs. Not gonna lie, I told him to go down because I'm a total wimp. But he said, can you go with me? I realize we're children. So we both go down. The downstairs is completely dark as my husband turns off everything before going to bed. The TV was indeed on. And how, may you ask, are we sure that we turned it off? Well, when I first turn on the TV, it goes straight to channels. We don't ever watch these channels. We straight up stream everything. Plus, Cocomelon and Bluey are on three-fourths of the time. It was on some weird-ass karate movie on one of the channels. So it had to have been turned on. We also don't have a remote for this TV, so... My son sort of dunked it in his drink. We still haven't replaced it. We just use our phones. But my husband was asleep and his phone was dark. He got his phone out when he realized the TV was on and opened the app and saw it was on. It wasn't opened before, so no way... Well, he was asleep. I was reading and my app wasn't on either. But right before the TV came on, my cat jumped again. Luckily not on my face this time. So something spooked him. He's not one to be spooked, at least not like this. So, I believe the spirits come and go in my home. I guess they came to visit once again. One strong enough to turn on my TV, which is creepy to be honest. I mean, maybe we just got hacked. That was my second guess. But my cat's reaction makes me think otherwise. A morning flicker in my bathroom makes me question my sanity. As my previous posts have possibly shown signs of paranormal activity in my house, thought I might add just another for documentation. At this point, I can't be sure if maybe I'm having electrical issues or ghosts. I woke up pretty late this morning as we had celebrated my son's third birthday. We were exhausted by the end. My husband had to get up early for a job. He works on garage doors. My children just have woken up. It's 9.50 a.m. I always check my clock when I wake up. As per my morning ritual, I go to the bathroom and pee first. I turn the bathroom light on, actually a bit unusual for me to do that, but I guess I was feeling like really getting myself awake. I'm sitting and doing my business. And the light, which has three lights on it, all started flickering and buzzing, and then literally just blow out. I'm like, what the fuck? Now, I know most of you guys will be, oh, you probably have some electrical issue. And maybe it is. But of course, my first start... Knowing the things that have happened in this house already is ghost or demon in my house. Finishing up my business and calming myself down. I'm like, wow. Being a bit delulu, it's probably just an electrical issue. Yeah, that was my thought, till I turned my light back on. I don't know much about electronical stuff, but I thought I should turn the switch off, just in case, right? Turned it off, but the lights came on and they were completely fine. No buzzing, no flickering, and I turned them off and back on just to make sure I wasn't daydreaming. Yeah, what the fuck. Ask Reddit Several people, myself included, have seen or felt a presence which we have affectionately called the Man in White. In order, here are the stories. My brother was cooking with his girlfriend in the kitchen, and from the periphery he saw a white figure pass in front of the kitchen door as he was walking through the hallway. I was in my room and he asked me if I'd passed through there. I hadn't. A maid was cleaning the bathroom. She felt like in a really intense manner that something was looking at her from the bathroom door. She told my mom about it, was really affected by it. A different maid was walking through the hallway that connects the bedroom on her way to clean the bathroom that's on the way to my room. When she got to the bathroom, the door was open, saw a figure standing in front of the toilet. She assumed it was me peeing with the door open and quickly turned away. 
continued on to the bedrooms to tidy them up. I was in my room, so when got to it and saw me, she turned around to the bathroom to check if there was someone. She screamed and sat on my bed pale with goosebumps when she noticed it wasn't anybody anymore. While I was in that same bathroom brushing my teeth, I saw a shadow pass through the hallway. Granted, I don't give my story much importance because it might have been nothing, just my brain forming patterns. My mother's sneakers fell to the floor from the top of the washing machine. It wasn't turned on. My mother even brought one of my uncles. He's a priest. He came to cleanse the house. That was before the second maid and I saw him. I know these stories are pretty mild, but the man in white is pretty chill. He's become a recurrent joke at our house. The dogs are looking fixedly at the hall. The man in white. I lose my socks. The man in white. Someone feels a presence somehow. Chill out, man in white. And I hope you guys all chill out. See ya.